Hi, so today I want to talk to you about uh, graduate student labor unions. Graduate students hold a really interesting position at universities because they are uh, students, they go to class, uh, they have to maintain a certain GPA to remain in their graduate program. Um, their, their goal is to work toward a degree. And, uh, and so in a lot of ways, they're students. But then with graduate students, especially those in doctoral programs, uh, they do other things within the, uh, uh, their day-to-day -day at the university. They, uh, they teach, they conduct research, and, uh, and provide services to the university that are, that are vital to the operation of the university. Many undergraduates uh, uh, at institutions have graduate students who are their instructors and they don't even really realize that the graduate student that is instructing them, professor, whoever, is, uh, is a graduate student and not just a faculty member. And so um, graduate students are performing duties for the university that are vital to the operation of the university. And so graduate students hold this unique position where they're, where they're arguably both uh, student and worker. Uh, for these services that they get, that they, that they perform, teaching and research, they oftentimes get tuition remission, where either all of or partial uh, tuition is taken care of by the university and they don't owe anything. Um, they get uh, 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 possibly health care benefits uh, at a discount, where the university picks up a certain amount of, of uh, the, health, the cost of health care. And uh, and they get a stipend, so they they the university actually cuts them a check uh, or a direct deposit because who deals with checks these days, right? Um, uh, deposits a certain amount of money every other every other week or once a month into their bank account for the work they do uh, for a ten week uh, assistantship or a twenty week assistantship. Or, I'm sorry, a, a 10 hour assistantship or a 20 hour assistantship or, or more. So, so that's, that's where graduate students are at. And it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting position to be in. And it's a little bit different at public universities than it is at private universities. At public universities, a lot of times the state legislature uh, weighs in on whether graduate students can unionize and are employees or not. So in some states, graduate students have the right to unionize, and in other states, graduate students do not have that right. Uh, private universities are uh, governed by the National Labor Relations Board, um, and the National Labor Relations Board determines who in the private sector is a, a, a worker and who is not. So when it comes to private universities, uh, unionizing, the National Labor Relations Board decides whether they can or, not, or cannot negotiate a contract. This debate over the status of graduate students is not unlike the debate over student athletes. So uh, for those of you who follow sports, you have probably heard a lot of debate about whether uh, college athletes, especially at major um, NCAA programs, at, uh, playing uh, athletes that play football for uh, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, uh, uh, whether they should uh, get paid for what they do because so many people are making money off of their product that, yeah, they're student athletes, but they're also on television every Saturday afternoon making money for advertisers, making money for the university, making money for a lot of different uh, groups involved. And then, and then they don't uh, uh, see any of, of that uh, cash themselves for the product that they are, after all, providing. 
it's not it's not terribly unlike that discussion between are they a student are they a worker because they're an athlete and they're providing this what ends up being a service to the university um, it, it's not that it's it's a lot like that in, in that graduate students do a lot of teaching and research and, and things for the university, but also are students. So the National Labor Relations Board, uh, the NLRB, has ruled on this issue several times. And the way it works is that the, the board is made up of five uh, appointed members. And these five appointed members uh, uh, three are, are um, of, from one political party and two are from another political party. So the split on the board, the, the administration gets to choose the makeup, but it always favors whoever uh, is president, whoever, whoever's party is in power at, as, uh, at, at that time. So as a result, you, we see the NLRB shift from being very pro-worker to being very pro-employer. And so in 2000, the National Labor Relations Board ruled that New York University employees were workers and had the right to unionize. In, uh, that would have been at the very end of the Clinton administration. In 2004, the NLRB ruled that students at Brown University were not workers and couldn't organize a labor union legitimately. In 2016, the NLRB again reversed that decision and ruled that students at Columbia were workers and uh, uh, should be able to organize a labor union. Now it's expected, so that would have been 2000 under Bill Clinton, 2004 under uh, George Bush, and 2016 at the tail end of the Obama administration. So now it's expected that with the makeup of the NLRB changing back to favoring uh, uh, employers and having more Republicans on the board than Democrats, it's expected that the Trump administration's board will reverse this decision again and say that graduate students are not employees. So it, it, a lot of this doesn't really depend on the arguments being made for and against who is an employee and who's a student and who's both. It's actually, a lot of it just has to do with partisanship. Nonetheless, there are arguments for and there are arguments against graduate student labor unions. So let's talk about the ones for. Uh, first, first of all, graduate students argue, the ones in favor of unionizing, argue that they are performing uh, legitimate tasks for the university that are core to the operations of the university. So if the university was a factory and they were building automobiles, the graduate students are arguing, we're building the automobiles. So we're obviously your workers. Well. These graduate students, especially PhD students who teach a lot of classes and um, conduct a lot of research, and of course master, some master students who are also on assistantship, they argue, look, we're doing the teaching. We're the people that the undergraduates uh, see in the classroom, especially for introductory level classes that are core to uh, an undergraduate education. We're doing the teaching. We're doing the research. We are definitely performing the tasks that uh, uh, other people at the university get paid much better to do. And so this is that we should be compensated and we should have the right as employees to unionize and bargain for our compensation and our health care benefits and our working conditions. Uh, the graduate students also add that, look, we're, we're cheap labor and, you know, it's uh, the administration is motivated to keep us not employees and to make up excuses for why we're not employees because we're, we're cheap labor. We can, uh, along with adjuncts as graduate students, we, um, uh, we teach classes at a small fraction of what you would pay a full-time person to teach. 
and and then uh, uh, you know so they they make this argument that look we are employees because of what we do for the university uh, to argue in favor of a seat at the table that that they should have um, some kind of uh, voice in shared governance <clears throat> so so that's the, the basic argument for yes. Like, yes, uh, graduate students are employees and should have the right to organize the labor union. Now let's talk a little bit about a, the against side. So uh, one of the things that administrators argue against graduate students unionizing, one of the things they say is, well, Teaching and research, yes, that's part of what you do here at the university, but, but that's part of your training. Uh, that is not, it's not part of the work, it's part of your training as being tomorrow's scholars. You're graduate students, you're being trained to be future scholars, and um, part of your training is teaching courses and conducting research. <clears throat> so, this argument especially, uh, works for PhD students. Uh, if you're a graduate student in a master's program and you're not going to be working in academia and that's not your goal, then that argument doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, why are you training me to be, why is this part of my training? Why are you training me to be tomorrow's scholar? Know that I'm here to get a master's in business administration and I'm, I'm working as a TA to fund it. I'm doing something else afterwards. PhD students, oftentimes, the goal is to make to make you good researchers and teachers because a lot of people who are PhD students and are working toward a PhD, the primary thing that PhD students want to do, and they can work in industry too, and they can, they can work outside of academia, but the primary thing that people with a PhD want to do is work at a university or a research firm or something like that. So, so, uh, so it makes sense that it's part of their training, like, look, we you, you come in here, you take classes, but we also have you gain teaching experience and research experience that's going to help you get a job in academia where your job will then be teaching and research and service. So this is part of your training. And it's not, it's not part of uh, being employed. Uh, you know, one of the other arguments that administrators make against labor unions uh, for graduate students is that if you bring in a labor union, and they negotiate a contract that limits the number of hours that, that uh, uh, graduate students can work during the week, um, and it limits the amount of time you can work in a lab, and it uh, uh, creates a structure, uh, a negotiated structure for a relationship with your mentors. So <clears throat> rather than that be an organic relationship between your advisor and you as you're working on a dissertation and teaching courses and uh, uh, conducting research, then now the labor union plays a role in that. And they argue that that's bad for mentoring and that's bad for your training as a, a graduate student to become uh, tomorrow's scholar. So uh, the, 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 last, the last point to make, <coughs> the last point to make is that uh, uh, one member of the NLRB that dissented in the Columbia decision uh, argued that students are not hired. Their graduate students might, yes, they teach and they research, but they're not hired. They're admitted based on their academic qualifications. And since they're admitted based on their academics, they're admitted based on being a student. They're not hired. They don't go through an employment process where they're hired to work for the university. And so that's a, a, a structural argument about uh, who, who is a worker and who is a student. Um, and, and the point there is that the process for uh, getting a graduate student is academic, not um, employment-based. So I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk about talk about my own experiences because I was a graduate student. So <clears throat> when I was a graduate student, 
I was a graduate student at two places, Bowling Green State University in a uh, Master's of Public Administration program, and then Kent State University in Ohio, uh, both schools in Ohio actually, uh, for a PhD in political science. So when I was a graduate student, there, were some, there was some talk. We were watching what was happening elsewhere uh, when it came to graduate student un labor unions. And I was working on a dissertation about labor unions and teaching at the time. And there, were some, there was some talk among the graduate students <clears throat> about organizing. <clears throat> so uh, a couple things. Well, a couple of observations. Number one, <clears throat> the state of Ohio doesn't allow graduate students to unionize in, at state universities. So uh, the state of Ohio, the Ohio legislature, had had a, a legislation that says, no, you, you can't organize at a state university. You're not employees. N no labor unions. <clears throat> so that would have been very difficult to overcome. But uh, uh, the other thing, the other thing I observed at the time that I was there, was there was some talk, and nothing ever really, no serious uh, uh, things ever happened. But at least it was part of a discussion about graduate student unions. And Ohio doesn't allow graduate students to unionize. But the other thing that I, I uh, commented on, was that it takes a really long time to organize a labor union. The process is not like you wake up one morning and you say, well, now I'm going to organize a labor union. That'll be done by 5 o'clock on Friday. No, you, you have to go get a whole lot of support from your fellow graduate students, a whole lot of information sessions. You have to figure out who you want to represent you, the American Federation of Teachers or the National Education Association or someone else. Um, and, uh, and you have to start organizing, and organizing is a lot of work. I've talked to a lot of labor union uh, organizers and a lot of la people in labor unions. Organizing is a lot of work. They collect, you collect a lot of signature cards to try and get people to um, uh, pledge their support in, in an election. You have, to get, you have to then get certified for an election, and then as uh, if you've paid any attention to what has happened with graduate students at Chicago and Harvard, the administration then stalls. Um, and they, they stall when professors try to unionize, too. Um, they come up with all kinds of reasons that the professors shouldn't have uh, the right to unionize and collectively bargain a contract. And it takes years to, to actually get to your first negotiated contract. And and so uh, one of the things that... that uh, uh, from my personal perspective as a graduate student, my attitude was, I don't really want to be here for a decade. My plan is to not be a career graduate student. Uh, yes, would I like um, a better stipend? We were paid uh, $12,500 uh, a year at the time. And uh, uh, would I have liked to have been paid more? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, would have maybe kept me from you know, scrubbing toilets in the summer uh, at a summer job or, or whatever. I would have kept some of my friends from driving Lyft and Uber all the time. And many of us are non-traditional, like, well, I shouldn't say non-traditional. There is no traditional PhD student. We're, you know, uh, uh, older and have families uh, to support. And so, you know, $12,500 doesn't go very far when you have kids. Um, yeah, what I've liked... A better stipend, sure. Um, and would I have liked better health care benefits, sure. A seat at the table, sure. I mean, if, it, if if those things would have come out of unionizing, absolutely. But at the same time, I was uh, from the position that I needed to write my dissertation, needed to focus on becoming, uh, uh, finishing, graduating, and moving on to the next thing in, in, in my life because I didn't I didn't view myself as, as uh, uh, someone who was going to uproot the entire system, change the Ohio legislature, uh, unionize, and then be there to, to, to enjoy the benefits of the labor union. I mean one of the thing one of the challenges that graduate students have when it comes to 
unionizing is you PhD students, you know, you, you want to get, get out, like, usually they're four to six year programs, depending on how fast you can write your dissertation. Some people take longer, seven, eight, nine years. Regardless, there's an end in sight. Um, this isn't something that you plan on doing. You don't plan on being a career graduate student. So the people who organize the labor union at Columbia or New York or, or wherever, they, they organize the labor union, they bargain the first contract, and if they've been writing their dissertation, they graduate and they don't get to see the benefits of all of that hard work they did. So, uh, so that, that's, a, that's a complicated issue for, for graduate students when you're thinking about what's best for you uh, and what's best for graduate students as a whole and uh, uh, maintaining a fair wage and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, I wrote my dissertation and graduated and I'm very grateful for the teaching experience I got, teaching introduction to American government and uh, uh, having tuition remission and, and uh, affordable health care. The healthcare almost got taken away because of the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor changed hands and then ruled that uh, universities couldn't give graduate students uh, uh, they couldn't give graduate students employee benefits and and uh, employer employee benefits are uh, healthcare, and so they couldn't discount us and pick up a percentage of our healthcare. And I was getting a pretty good rate on healthcare for. Uh, uh, compared to the just regular student rate. So, so this issue is complicated, and it's also something that I, as a former graduate student, know, know pretty well. So um, yeah, yeah. So are graduate students employees? It's a complicated question.